Hey everyone, in this video we are going to tear down this Milwaukee M18 6 amp hour battery. I had a friend send me a text and ask if he thought I could fix this because it took a tumble. So I said sure and <laughs> later on I found out it fell about 50 feet onto a concrete slab. Uh, the only damage that I could see is that this side cover popped out. Um, so I'm guessing it fell, you know, kind of like this and push this out. Um, and the, the indicator button is hard and does not work anymore. Um, yeah, no, it doesn't work. So it did one time and then it like made a crunching sound <laughs> uh, and stopped. So let's get this thing open. It goes without saying that I have no idea what kind of damage to expect uh, inside of this. So this may end up being the most exciting video I've ever done because it might catch on fire. I, I have no idea. Uh, hopefully I don't burn my house down. Well, <laughs> let's dig in. To get started, there are four tamper-proof T10 Torx bits uh, that we need to remove, two on each end. So let's go ahead and get those off. So it just occurred to me that I should probably take a multimeter to, to these terminals and see if we are getting any kind of output voltage. Um, if not, I can expect that either the BMS is damaged or there is a, well, something bigger wrong. Hopefully we have output voltage. Uh, so I'm going to touch the negative here. Eh. We have 18.8 volts, so that tells me that there are... Uh, connections between all of the cells in here still and um, I'm guessing there may be something wrong with the BMS whatever circuitry they have in here so I got the bolts out let's get this cover off hmm, well that was easy uh, now what Holy cow, guys, this thing took a beating. So, uh, upon inspection, I can confirm that right here is is cracked. Uh, you can see there's a bunch of impact damage here. This plastic's all broken. Um, you can see how these are kind of offset a little bit. You can see bare metal right here. Um, so obviously it landed on this corner. This is all shifted. You can see that this is out of the pin. There's like a little locating pin in there that it has slid out of. This one is out of the locating pin as well. Um, wow. Okay, so this is completely disconnected. And this one, there's only one of them still connected, but it looks like that one all, yeah, that one also let go. So that's probably how I'm getting my 18 volts by this top piece right here. That's still touching, but it looks like, yeah, that whole thing. You can see that whole thing's moving. Um, so I don't know if spot welding this back together is just, is going to make it work. Guess we can try it. Alrighty, I have the K weld set to 63 joules. Uh, don't know why I picked that. Rory says hello. Don't you? Yeah. Okay. Let's do some spot welding. Oh boy. Guess I'll start at the inside. Hopefully, you guys can see this. And it did not work. Okay, let's try it again. Well, that was terrifying. Uh, why did you do that? Oh, I exploded it. 63 joules is too much. Well, it's stuck, but I'm going to try uh, 45 joules <laughs> on this one and see if that goes a little bit better. Uh, 
wondering if I'm not getting a great connection on this as well. I don't really want to go in the same spot that they welded, but I guess I'll try it. That didn't work. Okay. Uh, I don't think this is going to work, guys. This must have some kind of coating on it because it's turning black and it doesn't want to stick. Crap. So this is magnetic. Uh, so I'm guessing this is probably steel. Which isn't good. I'm going to try and weld, since this stuck, I'm going to try and weld this outside and see if I can get that to stick. I have the K weld set to 40 joules to see if that'll prevent it from exploding everything. And let's see what we get on this. I'm going to go in the same spot as they welded originally on this one and just see. That was... Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to try going across this because I've been doing it on the same tab. I wonder if it'll work if I do one on either side, like this. Ho oh, ho, I'm on to something, guys. That one definitely stuck. This one didn't stick very well. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. All right, we'll go back to 50 and see if that helps. I'm going to do this side now. Yep, that's the ticket. So those welded. Let's do it across here. Even though it's really gross. Yep. Alright. So, looking back, it makes a lot of sense, but I needed to weld uh, one probe on this tab and one probe on this tab, so that way the current would flow out of this tab into the cell across the cell, and then into this tab. Because the way spot welding works is uh, the interface between the cell and the nickel strip, or in this case steel, um, there's a, a very heavy resistance at that connection point. So when current flows from the tab into the cell, uh, that resistance creates heat. That heat literally liquefies the metal in that interface, and then you create a nugget um, of fused metal. So, time, pressure, and amperage uh, are basically the three main factors for spot welding. And that is on there now. So I wonder, I don't have any M18 tools. I wonder if it would work now, uh, being that we have output voltage here. Oh, look at that. What? Huh. The button works. Does, that's so, so weird. This thing lights up. I really hope it was that easy and all I had to do was respot weld this. Um, I guess before I put this cover back, well, I'll put the cover back on. I want to try this thing out now. There you go everyone, apparently K-welds are not just for building batteries, you can use them to repair them. So if you find some old tool batteries that quit working after a tumble, maybe you can fix it. I didn't really expect this battery to work again, because I figured the circuit board probably broke, but I'm pretty astonished that it actually worked. Uh, and really, Milwaukee batteries are amazing. I know they, they're expensive, but clearly they hold up. <laughs> Alright everyone, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you on the next one.